Do the New York Jets have the best roster in the AFC East in 2024? Going to do this uh, roster ranking edition of the AFC East. Do it, did it last couple years. Um, Jets I had at third in the division heading into the 2022 season. I had them tied second with Miami uh, heading into last year. Uh, and yeah, man, I think we might have a new number one. Let, let's see how it all shanks, shakes out. I'm going to rank each position group. Uh, in the division and here here's the quick quick couple caveats off the top if someone just saying lol you're the jets you say this every year offseason champs ain't nobody no jet fan said this from like 2013 to 2022 so please uh, the roster speaks for itself and also for jet fans here's the homer test where do you want the jets to be ranked lower that's the homer test no we should be higher here we should be higher here okay where should we be lower if there's nowhere we should be lower than that, that might be an indication that we're being homers. So coaching staff to start off, I have my last year's notes to the side as well here. We can see if there's any changes. Coaching staff, pretty easy because we know that Bills and Dolphins are the top two, Jets and Patriots are the bottom two. So whatever you want to shake it up in between there is fine. But I would put the Bills at number one because I don't have a good enough reason to put anybody else above them. I think, <clears throat> to be honest, if all these head coaches were free agents, I might hire Mike McDaniel to be my head coach. Just because when in doubt, I would lean offense. The dude has a, a decent quarterback into a tongue of Iloa behind a makeshift offensive line last year. Granted, an elite speed and, and great talent at the skill position players. And they were the number one offense in the NFL. And I think a lot of that has to do we, with Tyree Kill and Mike McDaniel are the two primary reasons. But I'll go Bills number one um, just because the, their resume of of winning over the past four years. And also, let's not forget who the Bills were before before Sean McDermott got there. They were the Jets, <laughs> right? And uh, he broke the playoff drought before Josh Allen with Tyrod Taylor. So we'll go Bills number one, Dolphins number two. Then I'll go Jets number three over the unknown of Gerard Mayo. So Bills, then Dolphins, then Jets, then Patriots for the coaching staff, pretty easy there. Quarterback is really easy for me, too. So the quarterback, I'm looking at last year's. I have it the same exact order. Uh, number one, Josh Allen. Number two, Aaron Rodgers. Number three, Tua. Number four, Brissett. I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, I, I tweeted my list out on Twitter just before I started the stream. It's funny. It's Sports fans are funny. So... <laughs> This time last year, or a little bit before this time, whenever the Aaron Rodgers trade was, wasn't it after this? Yeah, it was in April at some point. <clears throat> Remember the how many Jeff fans I had to debate who were telling me that Derek Carr was a better option at quarterback than Aaron Rodgers. And now those same, those same people will tell me that Aaron Rodgers, a year older off of an Achilles tear, is better than prime Josh Allen. So Derek Carr is better than Josh Allen now. <laughs> it's an amazing world we live in. Yeah, man, obviously. No, no one, no one outside of the uh a Jet fan would take um Aaron Rodgers over Josh Allen in 2024. I don't think anybody outside of Miami is taking Tua over Rodgers. Okay, is what it is. Josh Allen, the only only player to get an MV first place MVP vote, not named Lamar last year, and he was good for all 17 games. Right, and uh with the with Tua, look, man, he he's better than I ever thought he would be you know, watching his first couple of years, but come on, just ask yourself this question. All right. If you, we talked about Derek Carr, if you flip flop Tua and Derek Carr last year, would the results from either the Saints or Dolphins be any different? I don't think so. I truly don't. Saints probably go nine and eight, miss the playoffs. The Dolphins with Derek Carr throwing a Tyree kill and Jalen Waddle probably go whatever they went nine and eight, 10 and, and seven, whatever, never beating a good team besides Dallas who can't play on the road and then get swiftly exited in the first round. So Derek Carr is not better than Aaron Rodgers. We established that, although we, we had some difficulty with that last year. I think we're all on the same page there now. And um, that's how it's going to go for a quarterback for me. Obviously, Brissett is decent, but he's number four. He's a bridge guy. One, Bills, two, Jets, three, Dolphins, four, Patriots in the quarterback rankings. Number three, offensive line, had the Bills first last year. And this is a weak spot in the division, man. 
The Dolphins got some like blank spots on this R Lads chart, some Madden create a player names. Oh boy. The the Patriots have Connor McDermott. We remember him. Connor McDermott as left tackle one on the depth chart right now. So shh, man. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know if I don't know if Joe Walt is not a New England Patriot, man. And the Jets, I do have the Jets one with some trepidation here. I just think that the talent level is significantly higher than the rest of the division with Tyron Smith, AVT, Joe Tittman, Morgan Moses, and John Simpson. Now, if you want to put the bills ahead just because of continuity and, and health, even though they did lose Mitch Morse, I get that. They do have the most reliable left tackle in the division in Deion Dawkins, including health, although Tyron Smith and, and Armstead are both probably better when healthy. So I'll go Jets number one, Bill on the offensive line, Bills number two. Dolphins, man, they got they got gutted. Um, but I'll have the Dolphins over the Patriots just because of the the hole at left tackle right now for New England. It is big for me, even though they got Anwenu and David Andrews or a couple of staples there for New England. Wide receiver, I will go Dolphins number one pretty easily. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, obviously. <clears throat> Jets number two, pretty convincingly as well, because. Mike Williams would probably be wide receiver one on the Patriots and Bills. And I'll go pay. I don't know, man. Kendrick Bourne <laughs> or Khalil Shakir. I think the Patriots might be third. The Bills, man. Who's I mean, they don't have a starting caliber outside receiver on their roster. The Bills, their number one outside receiver right now is Matt Collins. So obviously post draft, they'll probably have a first round receiver and maybe this will flip. Maybe they'll go ahead of the Patriots, but right now I have Bills at four. Tight end. Number one, Bills, Dalton Kincaid, best tight end in the division. And then Dawson Knox is a very capable number two. Number two, I will say the Patriots. Uh, pretty close between Pats and Jets, but you have um, Henry and then Austin Hooper, who's been a very capable tight end too in this league. So I would have Austin Hooper ahead of Jeremy Rucker right now. So that's kind of the tiebreaker there. Patriots two, Jets three in the tight end room. And then Dolphins four because they don't even really use tight ends in their offense. They don't raw. I mean, I think they signed John Smith, right? But that's not that's not moving it ahead of Conklin and Ruckert for me. The running back room. The running back room. Not the best running back in the division. That's Brees Hall. Probably the best running back in the conference is Brees Hall. The running back room, number one, Miami Dolphins. What are we doing here? Raheem Moster and Dev Raheem Moster and A Chain scored 32. Total touchdowns last year and a chain miss half the season. <laughs> Devon a chain averaged like 6.4 yards per carry. He was the most efficient running back in the NFL. So the running back room. Yeah, because they go Mostert, a chain, and then Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson's probably better than Izzy Vanacanda. So the jets go Brees, Izzy empty roster spot. So I'll take the Miami dolphins room. Uh, then number two, the jets just because Brees is star power better than the rest of the, uh, the division here. Bills. Number three, James Cook. James Cook is, is, if he can learn how to not drop and fumble, he would be a, probably like a top five back heading into this year. Patriots, Ramondre, Ramondre is really good. This is a good running back stable overall in the division. Ramondre is really solid, but yeah. Dolphins one, Jets two, Bills three, Patriots four in the running back room. Defense, defensive line. Um, Jets number one, comfortably with the addition of, Hassan Reddick and then the Bills losing Leonard Floyd. So the, the Jets, I mean, yeah, they probably have the arguably have the best defensive line in the league. You can make the case for. I'll go Bills number two at Oliver Beast, Greg Rousseau. He's like a Jermaine Johnson level player, really good. And they got some decent role players, Epinesa, um, Daquan Jones, but not quite what the Jets have. Three Patriots, uh, Matt Judon. Absolute stud. He's kind of carrying it for them. You know, they got like Christian Barrymore and some decent pieces there. Um, Uche. And the Dolphins number four because, man, dude, <clears throat> Christian Wilkins, gone. Um, Bradley Chubb, probably going to miss the whole year due to injury. Jalen Phillips, probably going to miss a good chunk of the year due to injury. So... Man, they got good. Their defense got gutted with injuries last year. They had Andrew Van Winkle out there as edge number one, then he got hurt. <coughs> Linebacker. 
Jets and Bills are one and two. You can make a it's an interesting case to be made because um Quincy Williams, all pro last year, right? Ascending talent. But Matt Milano, like the previous three years, was arguably the best linebacker in the league. Then you got CJ Mosley, who's in two years removed from an all pro, heading towards 32, kind of declining. And then you have um Terrell Bernard who was a freaking monster for the Bills last year, too. So, mm, and then Jamie and Sherwood, the depth is pretty negligible. I don't know. I went with the I went with the Jets when it was close to the offensive line. I'll throw this one to the Bills, I guess. Uh, whatever. Either way you want to go. 1A, 1B at linebacker. Three Patriots. Juwan Bentley carrying it there. Dolphins losing... Um, Losing Baker is a big one. So pretty, pretty non-debatable that the Jets are the top two and the Patriots and Dolphins are bottom two in linebacker. But I'll go Bills, Jets, Patriots, Dolphins there. Cornerback, Jets, obviously. Uh, best cornerback trio in the league, especially with the Bills losing Trey White. Bills, I will go number two. They do have um, Christian Benford is good. Teron Johnson is one of the best slots in the game. Who's their other outside starting corner? Um, his name is escaping me. Is it? It's not Dane Jackson. Who is it? I forget. But the uh, well, you know. And then I'll go with um the Patriots at number three. Look, Christian Gonzalez before he got injured last year was having a like this rookie season, not that far off from like Patrick Sertan, Sauce Gardner. The dude was a beat. He he had Garrett Wilson in a phone booth in that week three game. So I will I I will take Christian Gonzalez over Jalen Ramsey in the year 2024. Ramsey on the wrong uh heading on the wrong side of 30, coming off of injury. Xavier Howard no longer on the team. Then I'll go Dolphins at four for safety for cornerback. Safety, Dolphins at one. Javon Holland carrying it there, best safety in the division. Patriots at two. I like Kyle Duggar, man. He's a good player. Uh, Patriots also have Jack uh, Jack Jones, too, is a good corner. Um, Bills. Bills and Jets bottom here at safety. Um, oh, the, and the Dolphins also signed Jordan Poyer. So Poyer, Poyer and Holland, comfortably the best safety tandem. Patriots, too. Um, Bills with Taylor. Man. I don't know. I think Chuck Clark is probably better than any starting safety the Bills have. I think the Jets might be third. They were fourth last year, but the Bills have like roster bubble talent at safety. And the Jets have a lot of work to do there as well. I gave the Bills linebacker. I'll give the Jets safety. I'll go Jets three, Bills four. So <laughs> if you tallied this all up, um, the Jets would have the most like points, right? If you weighted it one through four, the Jets would have the most points. And I, and I think the Jets do have the best collection of talent in this division. And I might end up picking them to win this division, which I did not last year. And I did not have them as, as the best roster last year. I had the Bills as the best team last year with the Jets and Dolphins tied for two when I did the whole weighted point system. But Stefan Diggs might be enough to, to swing that a little bit. And here's the deal. The Bills are gonna are the betting favorites to win the division right now. And the reason is because we looked at those rankings, coaching and quarterback went to the Bills. The reason is Aaron Rodgers is 40 coming off of an Achilles. That's the reason. That's really it. It's 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers off an injury versus Josh Allen. That's what's that's what's swinging the betting odds. As people are more confident that Josh Allen is going to last 17 games and play at a top five level than they are for that of Aaron Rodgers. And I think that is objectively fair. But if you just look at the overall collection of talent on all four teams, I comfortably am confident saying that the Jets have the best overall roster. The pass rush, the the weapons, they're just void of holes. They really are. The Dolphins have offered no pass rush right now. No pass rush. The Bills don't roster a starting caliber outside receiver right now. I mean, those are ma those are crucial positions to be completely devoid of talent. Obviously, the season's not starting tomorrow, so I'll do another video, you know, post draft, and maybe things will change. But geez, um. <coughs> 
and the Patriots aren't even worth mentioning to be, which is great, which is great. So there you have it. Turn the roster stream over to you guys. Let's let's fight about it. Let's fight about the Jets and Dolphins running back room. I was the most. Uh, people were very angry. Brees Hall is better than A-Chain. Yeah, it's the room. <laughs> it's the room, guys. <laughs> yeah. The Jets don't even have a running. We don't, I don't even know if we have running back two right now. Is, is he a running back two? I don't know. Apparently, the coaches didn't think so because they refused to play him over the hologram of Dalvin Cook. So we'll see. Maybe they draft a running back. If you're already in here hanging out for the fact you want to smash the like button, that would be greatly appreciated. Mike's in here. What's up, man? Yeah, Zach Wilson was chasing sacks. Yeah, I saw some Eagles account say uh, Hassan Reddick was apparently, you know, chasing sacks and not being a disciplined football player. And that look, that is pure Eagles propaganda because they were getting buried for for um, trading Reddick. There's no there's no evidence of that. Like, show me the clips of it because I watched six games of Hassan Reddick last year. So I actually made a video that's going to come out later today about what I noticed in those six games, but I didn't notice him doing anything to chase sacks, which is his, which is his job. That's like saying Mike Williams is chasing, catching the football. Now. Yeah. I mean, it's just not even worth, it's not even worth addressing it more than that. This is silly, silly stuff. People think that Buffalo are going to jump in the top 10. Yeah. I keep seeing this from bills fans. The copium has been, insane now all of a sudden stefan diggs is like no big deal to, according to bills fans now all of a sudden stefan diggs is like an easily replaceable player when if you told if you told bills fans three days ago that garrett wilson is better than stefan diggs they would have lost their mind and actually i would take garrett wilson in 2024 look i would take garrett wilson year three with aaron Rodgers over 31 year old stefan diggs but you, you wouldn't be able to tell the Bills fan that <laughs> three days ago. But now all of a sudden, uh, Stefan Diggs is no big deal. Yeah. Interesting. I think Stefan Diggs is still pretty comfortably a top 15 receiver. But I think Gary Wilson could jump into like the top eight-ish to, to, to 10 to 12 tier. Yeah, the Bills jumping from... I mean, there's I see, oh, you're going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Trading from what, 28 to 4? First of all, has that ever been done? I Has that ever been done? What did, when uh, Mike Ditka traded the whole draft for Ricky Williams, what, what did he do? Maybe he did that, but you're going to have to give up. I think it's more likely in, <coughs> that they go get like Brandon Ayuk. They're not going to get T. Higgins. The Bengals are not trading T. Higgins to... I don't think they're going to trade him at all. I think they're going to let him play out this year, go uh, try and win a Super Bowl, and then let him walk and get the comp pick. But they're, the Bengals are not going to trade T. Higgins to another AFC contender. So maybe they will get Brandon Ayuk for pick 28. That's more likely than them jumping up to get Marvin Harrison or Neighbors, or even Odunze. So maybe you can jump up to Brian Thomas Jr. territory, but come on. Let's be serious. AFC East record prediction. Yeah, last year, last year my prediction was Bills eleven and six, Jets and Dolphins ten and seven. I think I'd flip it. I think I'd bump up the Jets to eleven right now, just off the cuff to eleven and six. Bills. 10 and 7. And then I, I think the Dolphins might go sell. Again, the Dolphins have objectively no no pass rush and a poor offensive line. I you can't overcome both of those things with a with a decent quarterback. Like the, the Dolphins losing Christian Wilkins, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb are it is you cannot overstate that. And I, I, I liked Miami's roster last year a lot. They had a lot of high scores on this when I did this last year. But they got, you know, they got unlucky too, man. The injury bug, brutal, man. Nip, nip their season too. They were running out third stringers on that defense last year in that playoff game.
Best O line and D line in the AFC is on paper. Yeah, the Jets, the Jets offensive line has a highest ceiling, but the floor is scary. The floor is scary for sure. And offensive line is just a it's a problem in the division. It's a problem in the league, honestly. Quality offensive line play. Jets 13 and 4. I I'm I'm not comfortable saying 13 and 4 personally. I mean 13. Did anybody go 13 and 4 last year? Were, were the Ravens 13 and 4? Maybe they were just they were blowing people out. <clears throat> I'm not anticipating that. I would say 11 wins for the Jets would be my prediction right now. We don't know. We have not played any games yet. Well, what are we going to talk about for, for five months? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Obviously, we're projecting. Just going to sweep the Bills this year? Well, I mean, they split with him the last two years with Zach Wilson and Mike White, so... I think they, they do match up well against Josh Allen, that's for sure. Well, the Dolphins have been beating our ass for a long time. I think we're 0-5 against Tua. Disgusting. With Derek Carr last season, do the Jets make the playoffs? Mm. <coughs> I think they definitely win. They definitely win at least two more games. Right? Because let's not like Zach Wilson aside. Dude, we played two games with Tim Boyle. Like, if Derek Carr plays the Falcons game instead of Tim Boyle, that's a win. If Derek Carr plays the Patriots game instead of uh, Zach Wilson, that's a win. So, and even when Zach Wilson played really well, like, he played really well in the Chiefs game, we lost. He played really well in the the Houston game. We won by 30 freaking points. Like, Derek Carr would have won that game, too. So, yeah, I think definitely two more wins comfortably because Derek Carr is, he's not horrible. He's a mediocre starting quarterback. That's eons better than what we had last year. But to me... Like the Jets ceiling with Derek Carr, we did this whole thing last year. I'm like, your ceiling is your ceiling is the divisional round with Derek Carr as your quarterback, which is okay. If that's your goal, now maybe the Jets don't win the Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe it all blows up in their face, but he was the only guy that a Super Bowl is, is on the table. Derek Carr, you're not discussing Super Bowl. Derek Carr will retire with like maybe one playoff win in his career. Maybe. And you're on paper, is this the best across the board roster the Jets have ever had? It's the best across the board roster the Jets have had since 1998, 1999. Waiting quarterback, because I think the overall talent on the <clears throat> late Mangini, early Rex Ryan teams, you could argue, is better because those offensive lines were elite, man. Those offensive lines were nasty. And then when we had um, uh, the trio of wide receivers of. Uh, Holmes, Cotri, and Braylon Edwards. You know, Dustin Keller as a tight end. Thomas Jones is a running back, and then eventually to like you know, LT. Yeah, those teams you could uh, with Revis and all that. I I'd say those teams you could probably argue I would say were better just because of the the variables we have. But Mark Sanchez was your quarterback, right? And he was like a backup, <laughs> so. Weighting the value of quarterback position, yes, I would say at least since then, it's the best roster the Jets have had on paper. So if we can't win this division now, then when? Gosh, then when? If they draft Bowers, they're number one. I, I think the Jets have the best roster in the division right now. Now, if if people don't want to pick the Jets to win the division, I'm not. I don't get all bent out of shape when people don't believe in the Jets. Because the, if your default position is LOL Jets, you have been correct for like 14 straight years. So whatever. And last year, when people didn't believe in the Jets, they said you have an old quarterback and a not good offensive line, and he's going to get hurt. And it literally happened immediately. Now it happened in a way that is like just cursed luck it's not even like he took a bunch of hits behind a bad offensive line they caught up to him no he just took a regular sack because he didn't throw the ball to wide open Garrett Wilson he died um <clears throat> so I'm not getting all worked up about that but if, if people are going to deny like the, the collection of ta I don't talents I don't even think people are doing that I think people are just 
worried about Rogers' health and have questions about the coaching staff, which is perfectly valid. I don't really see a legitimate reason to think Miami would be better than the Jets, though, to be honest. They can't, if you can't if you can't get to the quarterback, it's going to be a long year. You think the draft suggested draft Knobel? Yes. <coughs> other than Josh Allen, Dukuka says, other than Josh Allen, there are no other all pros on the team. On the Bills? Sure there are. Ed Oliver, uh, Teron Johnson, Matt Milano. Yeah, Dalvin Cook's 18-yard run in the playoffs and Brian Costello needing to change his shorts after. Dalvin Cook, still not on an NFL roster. Um, surprisingly enough. Dude, that's not the argument. This is what people are struggling with. I'm not saying A-Chain or Mostert are better than Hall. Okay, Brees Hall is the best running back in the AFC. And if you want to rank the Jets running back room over the Dolphins running back room because of that star power, that's fine. What I'm saying is the the totality of the, of the Dolphins running back room of Mostert and A-Chain and Jeff Wilson, putting that ahead of Hall, Izzy, who we don't even know what he is, and a blank roster spot is not crazy. Devon, uh, A-Chain had over 100 yards rushing a game last year. <laughs> Mostert led the league in touchdowns. Jeff Wilson's been a solid running back, too, in this league. So right now, Jeff Wilson is better than Izzy Banakanda. If you make, make a case otherwise with data, you can't. So that's the point. Nobody is saying that A-Chain or Mostert is better than Brees Hall, or at least I'm not saying that. That's not how the the roster, that's not how the rankings work, right? That's like saying, let me give another example from the list, right? That's like... Let me find one that makes sense. It's like if you were to rank um, the like the Dolphins, you'd say, "Oh, well, like Teron Armstead is is better than well he or 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 Deion Dawkins is going to play more games than Tyron Smith." Like it's not just one player; it's the totality of the room. Or Ed Oliver is a really Ed Oliver is was better than Quinn Williams last year by every stat. So the Bills should have number one defensive line. No, because the total, the totality of the Jets defensive line is better than the Bills defensive line. All right. Dude, nobody is underrating Brees Hall. What are you going on about, man? I think Brees Hall is the best running back in the conference. It's the running back room. Jeez. Dude, I appreciate you hanging out, but like the fact, it's just, we're, people are struggling, man. <laughs> people are struggling with the logic of this. Mm. Would you be upset with Latham at 10? No. Uh, I think Latham is the second best offensive tackle in the class. He can hold. He uh, he might start over Morgan Moses right away. Will the Diggs trade hurt the Jets? Uh, I don't get hurt the Jets. 
as far as picking Bowers, I don't think the Diggs trade affects the Jets in terms of their draft because the Bills are so picking so far away from the Jets. I don't think it impacts pick 10. Like, I don't know. I don't know where Bills fans are getting this. They're going to trade up and get like one of these top three receivers. I truly don't know if a team has ever traded from 28 all the way to like the top seven picks. At least they haven't. At least that hasn't happened in recent memory. Yeah, I guess I should have factored that into the quarterback rankings too because um, Tyrod Taylor, like the Dolphins, Tyrod Taylor is better than Mike White. Is Zach Wilson better than Skylar Thompson? That's a fun debate. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty close, man. Skylar Thompson, nah, he's terrible too. Um, Yeah, I it's, dude, I really hope we don't have to see Tyrod a bunch. Tyrod though was, was uh, I watched some of his... Watch three of his games last year. I'm not going to do any more than that on a backup quarterback because I did see a decent amount of like negative of reactions to Tyrod Taylor signing from Jet fans that were, I thought it would be just understood. Okay. You know what? Not like Brissett or Minshew level, but still top five backup solid. But I did see a lot of negative reactions. I'm like, I mean, check out these games. And I'm like, what's the holdup? What's the holdup? Because he played and people say, oh, it, my favorite argument from last year was actual people talking about literal football, saying it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. That has never been a true statement once in the history of football. It has never not mattered. Even if you had no offense, if the offensive line was me, Hawk, Jake Asman, Matt O'Leary. And Billy Turner. It would matter if Patrick Mahomes or. Tim Boyle was the quarterback. It would matter. It, the quarterback has never not mattered. I don't even know if Rodgers would do better. Get drug tested. So yeah, Tyrod Taylor in a mess of an offense at the Giants who had uh, offensive line injuries just as bad as ours. Offensive line play just as horrendous. Uh, worse wide receivers, worse weapons. Um, Brees Hall just as good, if not better than Saquon last year. And they did have better coaching. Dable better than um, Hackett. And Tyrod Taylor, uh, cl cl far and away better than anything we had last year. So, yeah, quarterback always matters. That's not, I don't even know, I can't even, uh, it hurts my brain. You know, like certain arguments you have where you're like, everyone is getting dumber for having to participate in this argument. That's what I feel like when I, people tell me quarterback doesn't matter. But then what's funny is Tim Boyle went in there and people were like, see, he's worse than Zach. How can that be if quarterback doesn't matter? Wouldn't it all be the same? No, because of course not, because it was just copium. And everyone knows that quarterback matters, and quarterback has always mattered, and a quarterback will always matter. That's why Patrick Mahomes has more guaranteed money than his entire offensive line and coaching staff combined. Now, moving on from quarterback not mattering. Now that we all know quarterback matters, was it you who tweeted Izzy's past pro numbers? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have. Uh, no, I haven't tweeted Izzy's past pro numbers. 100% fail concerning. Really? Um, I mean, I know that was something that the, he was not, he was not asked to participate in the passing game as a receiver at, or blocker in at pit much at all. So when I watched this film at pit, it was more of like an incomplete grade than, than he can't do this. But I do know that the Jets coaching staff did mention like that part, that blocking piece of why he wasn't able to play more. I don't know, man. I know Izzy is a he's a tough kid, and and blocking in the NFL, half of it is want to. So I don't think I don't see why that should be an issue. Like if you have the size and the want to, like Michael Carter had the want to. Michael Carter is just like five seven. <laughs> you just get destroyed. So that should be squared away. I mean, if you're a fifth round running back <clears throat> by year two, you should be able to be a running back too, because running back twos are very dime a dozen in the NFL. So if Izzy is like still buried on the depth chart next year, I'm going to kind of be like, eh, you know. <laughs> um, But if they do, that's why I would rather. Now that, now that we've, what else are we going to, what other, what other hot takes should I have? 
So A Chain being better, A Chain and Wilson being better than um Izzy Banacanda and a blank roster spot. Hot take number one. Hot take number two. Josh Allen better than Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers better than Tua and Derek Carr. All right, let's keep it coming. Quarterback matters. Another hot take. Let's fire up another one. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Another one is the uh, Ezekiel Elliott signing. Ezekiel Elliott is two million dollars. Would uh would not be the end of the Jets franchise. <laughs> I don't think it would. I don't think the Jets franchise would return to, you know, ashes if we sign Zeke Elliott for two million bucks to come in and, and, and block and, and catch a pass and pick up a third and one. That's the, because if it, if you're telling me your your depth running backs are Izzy Abanacanda and then like some six round rookie, well, okay. I guess Brees Hall is going to be doing a lot of blocking. And I would rather Brees Hall not spend his time trading paint with linebackers in the B gap. I'd rather him not do that. I'd rather use him in other ways. But then again, you can't sign Zeke Elliott because the, the franchise would go back to the dark days, as people tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm on my <clears throat> my intermittent fasting has me being a sarcastic. Uh, a hole today, but I'm just joking around with you guys. Do 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 do. Thank you for the super chat, man. No, I don't know about Izzy's past pro numbers. Uh, and if anything, it was a small sample size because Izzy hardly played last year. Okay, good. Jeff fan says our biggest issue going into next year is zero O line continuity. We need more depth. Yeah, I think they're gonna wait. Here's why I think they're gonna wait. Because I, I talked about it with like Tyler Boyd. It's like sign Tyler Boyd. It's like, okay, you can sign Tyler Boyd. But if you sign Tyler Boyd, say you get, say you you restructure JFM and you you make room room to give Tyler Boyd eight million bucks. <clears throat> then Romo Dunze falls to you at 10. You take Romo Dunze, BPA. Well, now you're paying wide receiver four and five, like 20 million combined in Boyd and Lazard. Not ideal resource management. Same thing if you go and sign David Bakhtiari now. And then maybe, whatever, maybe Joe Alt falls to at 10. Well, then, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's why they're going to wait. The only position I would be willing to, I'd be itching to jump on right now is safety. Because that's where it's like you can get a, a day one starter. Like, you know, Quandre Diggs or Justin Simmons is starting over Tony Adams. It is what it is, right? So we'll see what happens. I do think they'll add some depth. Like probably Connor McGovern is a guy they'll they'll, they'll call after the draft. Izzy is a running back four backup returner. Ah, uh, dude, he's uh, no. Nah, Izzy is at least a running back three man. I'd say hopefully. Fire State Jets says Dan Campbell does dumb things that literally cost his team wins multiple times a year. Yet he is carried by a QB playing at an elite level and offensive weapons. Uh, I mean, J Jared Goff has played very, very well. I think I think they're carried by the offensive line more than anything else. But is what it is. He was just in a conference championship game. Like, let let Robert Sala make a conference championship game and then have a Lions fan tell you that he's he's dumb. You know, it kind of is what it is. But sometimes those have worked. Sometimes those decisions have, have won him games and sometimes they've cost him games. It's just kind of how he rolls. They have the best roster... They don't have the best roster in the AFC East. They have the best roster in the AFC, says Sean. I don't think they have a better roster than Kansas City. If you're waiting position groups, they have prime, Kansas City has prime Patrick Mahomes, right? So I would not put the Jets above the Chiefs. <laughs> Is he has tiny hands? Does he really? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, a funny, that's a funny thing to bring up. Jets need better coaches, says GD Invest. Well, they're not getting better coaches any anytime soon, so we're going to have to roll with the guys we got for now. Bang Mateo says, Izzy Brownlee and Gibson are all third, four stringers, practice squad guys. Well, I mean, you're talking about, what, a fifth-round pick and two UDFAs, so that's kind of how it goes, right? Those guys are usually depth. Um, Yeah, I think I think ideally we wouldn't have even seen Izzy and, and Brownlee last year. It was just because Hardman and Cobb signings kind of flopped. And then Lazard got benched for Brownlee. So if we did, we were, if we made sound investments last year, we wouldn't have even seen those guys play. But if Brownlee and Gibson can be wide receiver five and six, making no money, that's fine. Even if Izzy is a running back three, it's not like there's no such thing as a fifth round bust. Yeah, I'd be slightly disappointed. I'd like him to be a running back two, but if he's a running back three on this team for the next three years, it's like, okay, whatever. It's a fifth round pick. Hawk says add Cream Hunt and draft Grendo. What did Cream Hunt do last year? I don't know, man. He might be washed as well. But again, there's not really great options at the vet running back market. Like if you're telling me Kareem Hunt or six round rookie, I'd probably lean Kareem Hunt. What did he do? Mm. <clears throat> he was okay in limited role last year. We had nine touchdowns. Is this correct? Hmm. I did not know that. Robert Sala is fine. Be careful. Maybe Robert Sala will be fine, but that's the kiss of death. Anytime a Jet fan has told me, don't worry about somebody because they're fine. You know how many times I was told Zach Wilson is fine? <laughs> Max Mitchell is fine. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. That's the kiss of death right there. Ty Johnson would have been the perfect running back two and back three. Yeah, Ty Johnson is more than capable as a running back three. Noah says signing Zeke would be huge for this offense. Big time third and short guy. Don't trust Izzy in the slightest yet. What are you doing with the 10th pick? Yeah, Brees has, or um, I know. Zeke has been throughout his career a very good blocker and a very efficient short yardage back. Now, I know as recently as 2022 that was the case because I really dug into it when we were talking about running back two last year. In terms of last year, if he if that was different, I I'm, I don't remember. I don't know. I haven't looked into what he did with the Patriots too much. Garrett Wilson is fine. No, but see, Garrett Wilson is a stud. See, when we say someone's fine, that typically means I don't have evidence that they're fine, but I hope that they're fine, right? Zach Wilson's fine. Please, please, Zach Wilson's fine, right? I don't need to say Garrett Wilson's fine. Garrett Wilson is a stud, and everyone knows it, and I can tell you why. He has back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with an upside-down traffic cone at quarterback, <clears throat> and then when that traffic cone goes out, a mop, a wet mop comes in for him. That's that's why I know Garrett Wilson is, is is that guy, and he's not. He's more than fine. Aaron Rodgers will be fine. Don't say it. Don't, don't stop it. Oh, come on, guys. Hackett will be fine with Rodgers. No, don't say it. See, that's when you know. That's when you know a dude's bad. When you have to say they're fine, that's when you know it's it's, it's curtains. 
Max Mitchell will be fine. Oh, no. Oh, no. Morgan Moses is fine. Yeah, I would agree, I would agree with that, actually. <laughs> Morgan Moses probably be fine. <laughs> Didn't we get a new offensive advisor? No, they tried to, but they couldn't hire anybody. Killer Cove, Super Chat, Preacher the Man says, loved watching your face yesterday when Jake was defending Salah with all his heart and soul. Yeah, I think me and me and Jake agree with the premise that we're curious to see what Salah does with Rodgers, but I, de I definitely am not, I definitely have more concerns about Salah than, than Jake, and then that that's fine, right? That's why we, that's why it's a show. If we 100% agreed, it would probably be a boring show. But um, yeah, look, Salah... Like I said yesterday, Salah does lots of does lots of things that really frustrate me, and I have videos that are up on the channel, like post game rants ripping Salah that are still public. You know, it, um, <clears throat> now those are just like emotional <laughs> post games, but some of it still stays true. Like I watched our, I watched with the season on the line, okay, against Miami, just punched in the teeth, lifeless, thirty to nothing, right? When the season's been on the line, the last, like when we were about to be when being mathematically eliminated from the playoffs was on the table in each of Salah's three years, we have taken a complete and utter schlacking blowout. No show. So I don't really care that he galvanized the team to beat, you know, the hapless Patriots in week 17. I don't care when it actually mattered. You got taken behind the shed, mugged, jumped, embarrassed while he stood by and watched. And they played his little Colgate commercial. Can't unsee it. That being said, seven wins with what we had at quarterback and offensive line is like, yeah, that's what I would expect. That's what I would expect. I don't know. Like, okay, is Mike Rabel a better coach than Robert Sala? Yeah, of course. Would right? Would Mike Rabel have had more than seven wins? I truly don't know. Maybe eight. <laughs> you know, I don't. There's not example. There's no examples of coaches who make the playoffs with the level of ineptitude at offensive line and quarterback play that we had is my point. But yeah, man, Robert Sala does a lot of things that are within his control that are dumb and frustrating personnel decisions. Can't figure out how to get his best guys in the field. We have been first in the, in the league in dead ball penalties over the last three years. We have the worst first quarter point differential the last three years. So you're unprepared. You're undisciplined. And <laughs> it's one thing to lose, but we got, you're getting blown out in your division, man. Even division games should be, should be close. Even when there's a talent disparity. So I see all that to say, Robert Sala, I'm like, hmm, let's see what happens with Rogers, but he, he's on thin ice. If they start one and three, I'm uh, fire his ass. I don't care. But, I think the people, the examples people give of other coaches who have, it was, oh, well, Kevin Stefanski, he did this with the Browns. Okay, we've, I've ad nauseum have had to explain that that's not a one for one because the Browns got Deshaun Watson for six games and they got to start five and one. So if the Jets got spotted five and one with Aaron Rodgers and then turned the keys over to Zach, they probably make the playoffs. But my point, my further point is, yeah, Kevin Stefanski is a, a shit ton better than Robert Sala. That's why he's coach of the year. So now when we compare, hold on. So now when we bring up Joe Douglas, are we are we bringing up Ozzie Newsom or whatever other executive of the year? When we bring up Zach Wilson, are we bringing up who are, uh, the league MVP and Lamar Jackson? Is that the bar now for everybody on the Jets? Or is that just the bar for the head coach? I don't understand. <laughs> like there's levels between you're the coach of the year and you're the worst coach in the NFL. So I don't even, I don't even, it's not even me defending Salah, which I guess it kind of is. I just think a lot of the arguments are silly or like JD is way better than Salah. Who hired Salah? JD is really good. It's just Salah and Zach. 
Hold on. So is his two most important decisions, he allegedly hired the worst two people in the world? Uh, that's a part of his resume. Anyway, let's move on. I'm really ready for the draft already. Yeah, this stream is going all over the place. <laughs> Me too, man. How far are we away? We got, actually, I think it's one, two, three weeks from today, right? Yeah, the draft is the 25th. Three weeks from today, baby. Let's go. Oh, finally. I hope they take Bowers just so we can fight about it. <laughs> oh, man. People are going to, if we take Bowers, it's going to be the same retread arguments for uh, <laughs> months. Months. And then if he drops his first pass, I told you so. Or if he scores a touchdown in the first game, I told you so. It'll be unbearable, man. Here's the super chat, though, Dean. Tim Tebow is fine. <laughs> Tim Tebow is fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Vladimir DeCoste is fine. Um, thoughts on the Francesca quote? Oh, that the Jets brass should all be fired if Joe Alt is there at 10 and they pass on him. It depends. If Joe Alt and Roma Dunes are there at 10, I could see that's not going to happen. They both won't be there at 10. <laughs> Probably neither one of them. Is that the one you're talking about? I mean, it depends. Here's the thing, too. Like, Joe Alt could very well not end up being the first tackle in the class. Like, th that's how the NFL draft works, man. I mean, within within about four weeks into last year, we knew that most that eighty percent of people were wrong about the quarterback rankings last year. That Bryce, sorry, sorry Bryce Young, I'm not writing off his career, but I'm sorry Bryce Young is not better than CJ Stroud. It is what it is. So maybe Olu Fashanu will be better than Joel. I don't know. I wouldn't bet on it, but I don't know. Count the bills out. Go ahead. Dude, no, I'm not counting the bills out. I'm not counting the bills out. If the bills win the AFC East next year, I would not be shocked. Um, Yeah, what else, what else do you want me to say? The Jets are the Jets. But see, that's a lazy argument, man. At least if you're going to come in, like at least talk, talk about why. Because I, I talked about all these rosters. I gave credit where credit is due. Um, But the Jets are the Jets is like such a – that's that, that that tells me you don't have anything else to say. That tells me you know that they're they're a loaded team with talent. Because before, you would say, well, the Jets have Zach Wilson. Or you would say, well, the Jets have Sam Darnold. Or you would say, well, the Jets have Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right? Or the Jets have no offensive line talent. Or the Jets don't have a wide receiver one. Or the Jets don't have a pass rush. Or the Jets don't have... So if all you got is the Jets of the Jets, that tells me... Eh, tells me you're sweating a little bit, brother. Super chats have like buttons now? I don't know. Can you like a super chat? That's kind of cool. <laughs> JFN 101 says, I don't care who we draft as long as he is a dude and not turning 24 in his rookie year. <coughs> I would I would agree with that. Oh, he said they should be shot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a uh, yeah I mean that's kind of his stick right dude I would trade up for neighbors man I just would I just would people say the wide receiver class is deep there's no neighbors that pick 72 <laughs> I don't know what to tell you man now you're not coming up to 5 so I guess if he falls to he's not going to fall to 10 but I guess if there's a world where he fell to like seven, but then the Titans are going to want to take all their neighbors themselves. So it's tough, man. It's tough. Hawk is fine. Jets do have the highest ceiling. 
Yeah, I think like wh- where do you what's m- your realistic expectation for Aaron Rodgers and where he's going to rank in the NFL? It's so hard, man. I, I I'm not expecting MVP. Am I expecting him to fall off a cliff and be unplayable? No. Um so I guess like is will Aaron Rodgers be around where like Matt Stafford is? That's a realistic expectation to me. And dude, Matt Stafford is what? The seventh or eighth best quarterback in the NFL last year? I mean, what he did with that cast of um rookie skill position players was really impressive. At uh, you know, I know he's um what 36. So Rodgers is older, but Rodgers is also Rodgers, better than Stafford, although Stafford might end up getting some Hall of Fame consideration. Excellent career, but not Rodgers. So if he can play play around that level, I mean, I know the Stafford stats didn't blow anybody out of the water, but he was definitely a top seven or eight quarterback last year. So can he be that? Then, yeah, I, I will pick the Jets to win the division if they can get that level of play, and he can play 15 games. Christian Hackenberg is fine. Jets should have kept Tim Boyle and started him against New England the last game of the season. They'd be right in the mix for not <coughs> for neighbors or alt. Yeah. Yeah, teams just don't try to lose, man. You know, it is what it is. I'll be honest, like I was like, I'm like, those last few games, it was kind of it was just house money. I'm like, you know what? If we win, cool. If we lose and we get a higher pick, cool. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, the people who can't see the, I'm like, dude, if you can't see like the, the value to your future team of like losing some of these meaningless games, like if Greg Zerline misses that kick and against the commanders, it's like, oh, our culture is ruined now. No, it, it doesn't. That game had no impact on your culture. You know, who would have an impact on your culture is Malik neighbors. All right. So that's kind of where I was at. But at the same time, teams and players don't try to lose. So I'm not going to get mad at Robert Sala and like, you know, whatever Trevor Simeon for trying to win games. That's what they're always going to do. They're always going to do. And guess what? If the Jets lost and they, and they blew that lead to the commanders, guess who would have been on a post game stream ripping them? Me. So to get mad at the team for winning, it kind of, you kind of really then can't get mad at them when they lose. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I love 1 p.m. on Sundays. I agree, but get out of here. Be talking to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. Go Jets.